Let's explore how to create and set up document definition sections, as well as how to configure assembly settings. So I'll start by opening up a document definition that currently has one document section that is based on a flexi layout, has one page. We can click on document definition, add document section, and uh, a wizard is launched and we can select which type of document we want to create a section for. Here we'll create another one based on a flexi layout. And we need to provide an image file, as well as a, an AFL file. And then we will call this page two. And there we have our new section. And now let's add another section. So I'll select an image file as well as an AFL. And I'll call this page three. Note too that document definitions can be imported, uh, document sections rather, can be imported. So for this document definition, we've got three sections and we're going to set the first page as mandatory when we make assembly settings. We're gonna say that the second page is optional and then the third page is mandatory and then we're going to allow annex pages as few as zero and as many as one. So we will do those settings in the document definition properties assembly tab. For making assembly setting configurations, I find this GUI intuitive and easy to use. So we mentioned that page two is optional. So for page two, we're gonna set the minimum number to zero and the maximum number to one. Whereas page one, minimum one, max one. Page three, minimum one, max one. We're also going to allow annex pages. And for annex pages, we are going to allow as few as zero and as many as one. So really what we're saying is page two is optional and annex pages are optional. Next, we're gonna turn on the use key fields equality assembling rule feature and with it we can select um, a key field from each document section these of course would have the same value and this is a way of trapping errors where documents are intermingled so if some other document with a different account number got intermixed with this document the um, this assembly rule check will catch that and it will throw an assembly error. So again, these must have identical values and you need to specify, if you're going to use this rule, you need to identify key fields in at least two sections. With these settings, uh, if a document comes in that has errors, like there's an error in its physical composition, um, missing pages, or the order of pages isn't correct, or these account numbers aren't the same, the errors can be checked in an assembly check, document assembly check verification queue. So that's a default queue that you can turn on, or if you choose not to turn it on, you can still resolve document assembly errors in the verification queue. So we're using some standard assembly rules here. We've enabled the capture of annex pages. We can also disable the section order check you can enable this option if you want to disable the checks for the order of sections in the document. So if uh, page two comes before page one and that's okay with you, um, you would wanna go ahead and check disable section order check. If you've turned on enable annex pages, you can click detect annexes on the basis of preset document structure without analyzing. This makes it possible to consider all pages between two matched documents as annex pages in case the documents have been already assembled before document definition matching. You can also check use custom assembly rules and create an assembly script. 
and an assembly script allows you to do uh, flexible rules about how documents need to be assembled. So um, these could be conditional operations. For instance, if you get document section one and document section two, then you need three of document section three, page three documents, something like that. So setting up conditional arguments is harder, or sometimes impossible with a GUI interface and much easier to do with a script. Uh, note that when you're scripting, it's recommended to use only index fields for comparison and avoid directly addressing the other document internal data, which can slow document assembly. So we've made our document assembly settings here. And just as a reminder, um, we can still update the uh, Flexi layouts for each one of these sections. So if we need to go back to Flexi Layout Studio and make any changes, oh, we by all means can re-ingest the AFL files as needed.